I was born in Hernando, Mississippi, in DeSoto County. Uh, I have four brothers, there's four of us. Uh, I am the oldest, um, two brothers and a sister. Um, my mother and my dad is where all this began. There are a lot of things that have gone on in my life. Um, and recently I just understood why. You know, growing up in, in Nesbitt, we had the greatest of times. You know, everything that we did, my mother and father, we raised all the food we ate and everything that went on. Uh, my dad, he loved the Lord. He's been gone now for over 26 years. He passed away of a massive heart attack. Uh, but I learned so much from him. He was a gentle man, but yet stern. When I made mistakes, or when we made mistakes, I got my butt tore up for that. But it just taught me some great, great lessons. And a lot of the lessons that I learned from my mom and dad, I still live by today. A lot of things that they taught me, I still live by today. I was saved at a young age. And one thing that I learned from being saved at a young age and that I pay attention to today is that as you're saved at a young age, you must be discipled. And I've learned that. And by me not being discipled at that young age, I did what I wanted to, even though I knew what I knew. Um, there was a time I got out in the world and I did my own thing. Went out in the world and I did some things that I wanted to do. But even in doing those things, there was always this voice that was telling me that I was wrong. And I'm so thankful for that. You know, I played sports in high school. I was a so-called decent athlete. I don't take credit for those things. But even in that time, the Lord was working in my life. Uh, I've been protected by so many things and so many times that I've had things going on in my life and not understanding then why but knowing now that I was protected and even being protected at that time it brought me to this chair right here right now and I'm so so thankful. Um, there are a lot of hurt and pain that's going on in my life um, because my dad who raised me was my stepdad. I had a real father but not knowing that but becoming of age, I found out that I had that. And not knowing in that, that in that lifetime and growing up, that my issues in life was rejection, all because of my real dad. And he rejected me, even though I had a father that raised me, who is my daddy. Um, and since the Lord has shown me that recently, I reached out to my real dad, but I think it kind of scared him because I just wanted to let him know what the Lord is doing in my life. Now I'm going to take back from there and go back. Um, I've been married twice, and in my first marriage, I was selfish. I was prideful. I was arrogant. Um, I, I thought I had it all, but truly I had nothing. Uh, because of the rejection, not knowing that, I rejected my wife. Um, I loved my children, but she and I, we didn't get along, and so we wind up divorcing. But to know what I know now, uh, the covenant that I made before the Lord, um, maybe I would have done things differently, but again, I go back to there was a reason why those things went on, because see, those things that went on brought me to this chair again. And I know that. And I wouldn't change anything about my life. Um, I have some regrets, I do, but I wouldn't change a thing. One thing I've learned, even in the hard knots of life, uh, I wouldn't change a thing that's going on with me and in my life. And, you know, sometimes my wife now, she, she says I move my hands too much, but I've learned that I do talk with my hands and I can't help that, but I love that though. I wouldn't change a thing about who I am, but I'm thankful that the Lord has brought me to where I am and to be this strong man, but I'm not the strong man by myself. It's because of Jesus Christ. I'm nothing without him. I, I, I wouldn't change anything about me with God. Um, he's my all in all. I love him more than I love life. I love the Lord more than I love my wife, and I love my wife. I love my children, and I love my children, but I love the Lord more than I love my children. And I know there are people who say, well, how can you do that if you understood? God's word says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I'm going to tell you, if you ever taste him, you will want nothing else. And nothing else will satisfy. This is what I know for myself. So I can talk about that. I get excited about that. Like, now I got chill phones. 
They say I can talk and do and act and say, this is it. This is who I am. And I love it. I love who I am. And there are those who say, oh, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. But yes, I do. Because see, I've tasted Jesus. And I don't want anything else. If you ever taste him, you won't want anything else. All right, now, remarried. Tracy and I have been together. We just celebrated our eighth uh, year anniversary this past Tuesday. But to rewind, um, October 14th, even going into this marriage, I bought baggage. She bought baggage. And when you bring baggage together, it's rough. It's like an F5 tornado. We just put it there at that. And it was ugly. But even in the ugliness, I never thought that what I'm about to talk about would happen. I remember one Wednesday night, I was at the house getting ready for church. Uh, she come home from work. We talked. I kissed. And I said, I'll see you later. I go to church, enjoy, come home, walk in the house. There's a note on the bed. She's gone. So she left. And in that leaving, I didn't call anyone. I went to the Lord. <laughs> and those are things that we don't normally do. We normally call someone, help, help, help. I need help. My wife is this, this, this. But I didn't. And I'm thankful that I didn't do that. Even though I didn't understand what was going on or why, because of the baggage and just other things, but it happened. But I went to the Lord. I didn't call my brothers and sisters. I didn't talk to anyone. I went to the Lord. The only thing the Lord gave me was Psalms 37, 7. And part of it says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. And one thing in Tracy's and I 18 month separation, no communication, no talking, no nothing. And I would reach out to her, but she would never reach back. And I remember the Lord showing me that it's not about her, it's about you and I. And one thing I've learned, if the Lord had not have separated us, I wouldn't be sitting in this chair right now. I wouldn't be giving this testimony about what went on in my life. Because see, I learned in those things, there's nothing to be ashamed of because the Lord will receive the glory, not me. Even in my hurts and my pains and my joys and my tears and in my screaming and my not understanding, God will still be glorified. And I've learned that that's all that matters to me. It's bringing the Lord glory. I know people will say, oh, you're crazy, you're this, you're that, but never mind with me. I want to glorify the Lord. And that's all that matters. Thinking about this, coming up to wanting to even do a testimony, the only thing that's on my mind is bringing the Lord glory. I want to honor Him. Even in my ugliness, even in my, my tough times, even in my crying, even in my screaming, I still want to honor the Lord. I can remember one night I was I had moved it, had to move out because we lost everything. House, all, all of it, everything. Um, I had to pack up all my stuff and move and leave. I went to my mom's. Um, the last place that I wanted to go is the first place that the Lord sent me was to my mother's. And one thing I learned even in that, not only did I grow, but my mother grew too. And I'm thankful for that. Because see, that's what I love about the Lord. Like I say, I am a portrait that the Lord is painting. I know in his word, he talks about the clay and he's the potter, but he's my artist and he takes me and he does what he pleases with me because I've surrendered all to him. Without him, Harold Jackson is nothing. But through him, all things are possible. And I've learned that because, see, he's done that with me. He's done things with me that I never would have expected to be done. I've gone places that I never would have thought that I would be. I, I'm not this well-educated, educated, bachelor degrees and all these things. I'm this simple, hardworking man that God will take me and use me for his glory. And I love that. I get excited about God's word. I've heard people say that the Bible is boring. Evidently there's something wrong with you if you think the Bible is boring. It is very exciting and it should excite you because see God's word excites me. Me, because I look at me. You wanna look at me, you wanna use me? Yes, I wanna use you and I wanna be used by God. No matter what people think about me, no matter what they say about me, I've lost people along the way. I've gained people through all of this. 
I remember when the Lord finally showed me my life. Because see, there was a time in my life to where I suppressed my life <clears throat> as a child growing up. I couldn't remember my childhood. And I was in a program, I was in this class that is called Overcoming Abuse God's Way. And in that class, he finally showed me my life. He took me back to my childhood and I remember everything and it set me free because in that reminded me of my childhood. He showed me that my problem in life was rejection. So by me being rejected by my real father, I rejected others. And in that rejection, I rejected my wife, Tracy, not even knowing it. I love my wife. I do. I, I do. When he showed me rejection, I said, I need to reach out to Tracy, but I know we hadn't talked in 18 months. And I texted her and told her what the Lord had shown me about my life. And as soon as I did that, we started talking. And that's where everything changed. Because again, the Lord showed me that, Harold, I gotta get you over here. I gotta get her over there. While I work on her over there, I'm gonna work on you over here. And he changed both of our lives. Most people wouldn't sit and talk about their marriage and how things have fallen apart. But you know what? I was once broken, but God's bringing me back together. And I wouldn't have it no other way. No other way. My hurts, my heartaches, my crying, and all those things. I'm a big guy, but I'm a big baby too. So I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not ashamed of who I am. I love who I am. I love who I am and I love the man that I'm becoming because I belong to Jesus Christ. I do. I belong to him. I'm Harold Jackson. His grace is enough.